Last weekend, you finished second overall in the uh, the NCAA National Cross Country. Um, you know, how do you feel about that performance? Uh, really good about it, mate. Uh, yeah, no, I, I raced exactly how I how I wanted to, and uh, put everything I had on the line there. So coming out of it, pretty proud of how I went. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You did amazing. So. Um, the lead up to that race was the uh, the intensity any different uh, than any other? Um, there might have been a bit more expectation on you with this one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's definitely right. I mean, I I had higher expectations of myself. I think, um, but at the same time, I was trying my best not to not to let it sort of overwhelm me. Uh, I think that happened to me last year, and it that just didn't result in a good race. So. Um, yeah, high expectations, but also just trying to keep a um, a level head about it all. Yeah, and having having the two other guys on the trip with me uh, helped out with that. Sort yep. of just made it made it seem like a training camp almost. Um, and yeah, no, it was it was a good trip. So I think it, think it was handled pretty well. Yeah, I mean, look, that's one of the great things about college, isn't it? That you know you. You're the support, you're training, you're competing with your with your friends, with a team the whole time. So, you know, I bet that was a, a real a real benefit to have them there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the great thing about it over here is it's not a non independent sort of individual sport anymore. You've got other guys on the team that you're out there running for. Um, it's a little different for us, but uh, not having the whole team there. But I mean, we had a little goal going into it that we were going to try and. Um, finish as the best top three in the country, sort of. Yeah. I mean, you don't get any award for that, but it was a little something that we we thought we'd work towards. Um, yeah, that's right. And so we had that in the back of the back of our head as well, as sort of a little bit of extra motivation for it, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, just little things like that that you can find over here that you can't really back home. Yeah. So, uh, really yeah. helps out. Yeah. Speaking of little bits of motivation, is there one point during that race that uh, you thought, you know, I could take this out? Yeah, yeah, there was there was one point where I'd sort of heard him breathe a bit heavier and, uh, I mean, just something I'd never really heard him do before, so I guess something different was, was a good sign for me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was good. It, it kept, me, kept me sort of motivated throughout the whole thing to... To keep going, like you ne- never know what's going to happen in the last last half of the race. Um, I mean, in the end, he did pull away from me, but it's uh, I don't know, little things like that that can just keep you going and maybe make you even more thirsty for uh, for the next race. So. Yeah. So as running isn't obviously the only facet of your life over there, you've got um, obviously your studies. So where where are you at in your studies, I and mean, what are you what are you doing, and how do you juggle everything? You know. With, with the pressure, the competing, the training, the studying, the exams. Yeah, no, I've I'm, I'm three years into my degree over here, so I've got another year to go. Um, and my last year shouldn't be too bad. I think I did the degree sort of top end heavy, so I've got just a few more subjects to go, and I'll be all done. But I, I kind of like this setup, having having something to do during the day rather than just get up, run, sit around for a bit, go for in the afternoon and get down, you know. So I, I, I like having stuff to do in the middle of the day and, I mean, obviously not all, I don't really enjoy all my classes here, like some of them you just got to take for it. But uh, I do like to keep busy during the day and I think having university um, to do that for you is, is handy. Uh, the studying is... I mean, I try and get most of it done during the day, but then again, my study habits aren't too great either. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's going well. It's going well. Uh, the setup setup's good, yeah. especially from a transition, sort of from high school to um, professional, or even just um, going into into an adult, I guess, going into the real world. So, yeah, it, uh, it's a little more independent than. Than what what I'm used to, I guess, which is nice. So yeah. it's a bit a bit of a mix up. Yeah, oh, that's great. And um, qualifying for Rio, um, where are you at with uh, that? And um, you know, how often do you think about it? You know, going through everything. Yeah, I mean, it's always always on your mind, I guess. Um, and I'd I'd love to make the team this year. I think I'm in good shape for it. So 
I'll, uh, I guess I got to, I'll try and run a qualifying time either indoor or outdoor season, um, and then go head back for the trials in April. And I think it's finished top three there. So, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'll try and race to win it. I guess you always do, but um, in the, at the end of the day, that top three is what you what you're looking for. Yeah. And then, uh, hope, hopefully, I can line up a trip over to Europe at the end of June, start of July, um, get a bit of racing in over there. But we'll, we'll see how the season unfolds. I've got to sit down with my coach these next couple of weeks and figure out what our, what the schedule is going to be for the for the next six months. But yeah. um, I'm sure Rio will be at the in the in the in the front of that uh, of that mindset. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, talking about lead up to um, a major race, do you have a you know a favourite session that you kind of you know, like to gauge? Oh, if you knock it out really well, it, it gives you confidence going into a major race. Yeah. Um, I guess in relation to cross country season, it's not necessarily the week leading up to it, but the week before, um, we usually do a set of six or seven k reps. Um, yeah. And I mean, if I can get get that under my belt pretty pretty well, um, not punching a couple of fast ones there, and feel feel comfortable with it, then I'm pretty confident leading yeah. into the to the last week's training that I'll be able just to roll through. You know, um, so we didn't really have any. I didn't really have any big races this year before nationals. I guess so all my confidence was just coming from training, and yeah, uh, yeah a lot of those sessions were going well for me. So. I think any session you do, if you do it well, can give you confidence leading into it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, definitely the Ks and the miles repeats are they're good for me. It just shows I've got the legs in me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. And what's uh, what's considered a fast a fast rep there for the K? Uh, so we'll do it on a grass, grass loop over here. So yeah. anywhere between 240 and 245. Yeah. Um, for the fast reps and then the slower reps between 245 and 250. So it's um, towards the end of the season we were starting to do it so that I was doing one in that 245 to 250 range and then yeah. one in the 240, 245 range and sort of alternate back and forth between those. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So. And so after, you know, pretty pretty heavy training load, like, you know, during the XC season and... Um, you know, continuing now, are you going to have a um, a rest or a break, like just to recoup at some point, or is it not even an issue? Uh, so I took this week's um, been so I've gone for a couple of jogs, but nothing nothing too yeah. serious. Just getting the, getting your legs back. Um, and I mean, even the next couple of weeks, will just be slowly building back into it. You know, no, no real rush to get to get straight back into it. Um, and we probably won't do a track workout until after the Christmas break, you know, just, yeah. uh, um, or it's similar to the summer where you, you're just building up your mileage and getting aerobically fit before you start doing the anaerobic stuff. So yeah. that'll be the focus for the next few weeks, just making sure the body's recovered fully, uh, and slowly, slowly building up that mileage again so that I can handle the, uh, the speed stuff when we get to it. Yeah. Right, and yeah. and growing up, just a bit of a random question, but did you have like a yeah. you know an idol, a sporting idol? Doesn't necessarily a runner, but you know someone someone you like what they did. Uh, I was a big Matt Hayden fan uh, growing oh, nice. up, so it was always uh, me and my brother and my dad were big into cricket when I was yeah. growing up. So it was great to see the big left hander strolling down the pitch to the fast bowlers and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I just admired the confidence he had when yeah. he went out there. And, uh, I mean, being a Queenslander was was, uh, was good as well. So, a, little, yeah. a, a local boy, which was nice. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I was a big Matt Hayden fan. He, he always composed himself so well when he was at the crease. So, that was something I tried to live by. Um, and he also seemed just to have... Be like a good, just a great guy on the field and stuff like that. I mean, aside from the sledging, but uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that was that was that was probably my sporting idol growing up. So I didn't didn't really know too many runners 
Uh, I'd heard of Montreal before, but I guess I never really got to know him. Yeah. Um, or hear hear from him at all. So I uh, couldn't really make a judgment based off that. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely the early cricket players and stuff like that. Yeah, nice. And if you if you got into the uh, the American sports over there, you got a favourite. Mate, I, I follow the basketball. Yeah. Um, the football, I I understand it. And I don't have a team, but I do enjoy watching it with a few few blokes who are uh, who are passionate about it. So yeah. that that's a bit of fun on a Sunday. Uh, hockey it moves too quick for me. Can't see the puck half the time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's good. I mean, they're they're sports nuts just like us back home. Yeah. So you go to any sort of. Uh, you're watching any sporting event. If you've got passionate fans there with you, it's going to be a good time. So yeah, yeah. nice. And, and do you have a career highlight like up to this point? Career highlight? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'd have to say two races over here. Uh, race this past weekend, not necessarily because of like the way it turned out, but just that I had a. Uh, my dad and my brother flew over to watch watch me race, yeah. and my girlfriend and her parents came down from Syracuse in New York to uh, surprise me and watch watch me race as well. So, I guess being able to have such a good race in front of them was uh, was great, and have have them there to celebrate it with me. Yeah. Uh, so it's that one, and then Eugene two years ago. Um, I got, I think I got sixth in the 5K at Nationals and ran a PB. But once again, my mum and sister came over to to watch me race, and it's just great because uh, I mean those two races are the only times they've seen me run in the last three or four years. You know, so being able to put it put on a big big performance for them was was something special. 